In this video, we discuss how different input, output and storage devices can be applied as a solution to different problems. So an input device is any device that allows you to pass information from the outside world into a computer system. There are literally hundreds of different input devices, but typical ones could be a mouse, a keyboard, a microphone, some kind of barcode scanner and a webcam. An output device is therefore any device that can take data stored in a digital form and convert it into another format that humans can process, for example, sound wave images or vibration feedback on a controller. Again, there's a vast range of different output devices, but here's a few. A visual display unit, a printer, projector, headphones and speakers. A storage device is any device used for either temporary or permanent storage of data. Now these can be internal or external. Here on the left is three examples of internal storage. We've got main memory, RAM a solid state hard drive and a magnetic hard drive. And here's some typical examples of external storage devices. We've got an optical disc such as a DVD or Blu-ray. We've got a USB pen, a memory card and an external hard drive. Now, when we get down to it, sometimes things aren't quite as simple as they seem. So here we have a gaming controller for a typical games console. Now, would you consider this an input device or an output device? Well, it certainly translates your button presses, your joystick movements into digital signals and sends them to the console. So surely this is a device for inputting data into a computer system. But most modern controllers also now have built-in speakers and provide vibration feedback. Now, both of these are output systems. So surely this is also an output device. The reality really is this probably is a complete embedded system. It almost certainly will have its own processor processing data before it sends it off to the console and knowing how to interpret that data to produce output. You don't need to worry too much about this fine level of detail for your exam, but you should consider this probably primarily an input device, but just be aware the lines get a bit blurry. At the end of the day, as long as you fully justify your answer in the exams, which is always a good idea, you could get away with calling this either. So here's a list of typical input, output and storage devices, which you might be expected to know about in the exam. Now, this list is far from exhaustive. There are literally are thousands of these type of devices, but this is certainly a good starting point. What's more important though, other than simply being able to understand and list these various devices, is knowing how they can be applied and used for a given situation or scenario. So here we have a cash point system that you might find in a high street. What input, output and storage devices might be used as part of this cash point system? Well, we can quickly identify various ways that this system is gathering input from the real world. We have the card reader. We have a keypad. We've got various buttons either side of the screen. And there's also a camera at the top for security purposes. All of these are input devices. There's also various output mechanisms. There's some form of monitor or display. There's a printer which will produce a receipt, a speaker to give audio feedback. And although it's not obvious, there's obviously some kind of actuator or motor that's actually delivering you the cash. Now this is considered an output device. Again, you can infer 
that there must be some storage devices behind this system, most likely some form of internal secondary storage, and most likely some main memory. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. How are input, output and storage devices used in typical applications of computer science? Thank you.